1985 brought another harbinger of good fortune, an unlikely hero from Warner Brothers' own backyard. It was strange growing up in Burbank because the studios were so close, yet so far away. Kind of magical, impenetrable walls, you know, that you drive by. We used to kind of try to sneak into the studios, <laughs> which was not very easy to do. Well, excuse me, sir, do you have a pass? Oh, no, I'm sorry, you can't enter without a pass, sir. So the other fellow said, what do you think I got down here, a duck? <laughs> a duck. <laughs> <laughs> I started out as an animator and done a couple of short films, which was the thing that probably helped me to get my first feature, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> Warner Brothers has one of the best backlogs. It was like a playground. What more fun could you have? Trashing the Warner Brothers backlot. It was an era where things could still surprise people, you know, to kind of come out of left field a little bit. Beetlejuice. It's showtime. And I think that happened with Beetlejuice. People really didn't know what it was, and it could have gone either way. It felt like making a Warner Brothers cartoon in a funny way. Don't you hate it when that happens? Let's go, Bob. Burton's lower-budget escapades turned into surprise hits at just the right moment. Time and Warner executives have